actually watch it make the changes live. I don't have to do anything with my mouse. I can move this onto a separate monitor and do something completely different or I don't know, go for my lunch. And this will just keep running and looking for bestsellers for me. This AI agent just helped me find five trending Etsy listings that had more than 10 purchases in the past 24 hours. This one gave me a long list of long tail keywords and potential t-shirt niches for Amazon, some of which are this one right here with only 73 results and a shirt with a 400k BSR, or this one with a 100 results, the top seller having a 38k BSR. And as we speak, this agent is currently using flying research for me to help me identify high potential evergreen niches. Welcome to the new era of AI for print and demand. These agents will help you automate many different workflows, including research, listings, analyzing niches to come up with better ideas, operating different softwares and tools that you commonly use. And in this video, I'm going to show you three different examples of AI agents that I'm going to be using, and I'll also show you how to set up your own. So in order to use an AI agent, you need to be on chatgpt.com. And if you click on tools, you will now see the agent mode right here. Once you click on that, it says describe a task. And you have to be quite specific here of what you want to to do inside of a browser because if you just say design me t-shirt or find a niche it doesn't really know what to do um, an example for that would be this prompt right here which i will leave in the description down below so i'll give you a few of these prompts for you for yourself to try out and kind of see what the workflow looks like and these are quite detailed step-by-step -step instructions to essentially conduct etsy research so that example i showed you at the very beginning of trending etsy shirts this was the prompt i used for the agent it says search for t-shirts on etsy.com apply filters modify the url to only show best sellers then sort by newest and check each listing individually for the text of how many people have bought it in the past 24 hours and if i click enter on this right now what it's going to do is set up its own desktop right here and as you can see it's already um, on etsy and filtering right here by star seller and physical product you can literally watch it make the changes live i don't have to do anything with my mouse i can move this onto a separate monitor and do something completely different or i don't know go for my lunch and this will just keep running and looking for best sellers for me you can see now it's changing the sorting right here to newest it also has changed the url because now it says best seller in these filters and now it's clicking on the first listing to identify the red text this one said in 20 plus basket so it's now gone back to the home page or the front page right here of the search results and clicking into the second listings you can also by the way click on these three dots up here and for example take over the browser so if there's something blocking the view or if you need to log into an account, this is a quick way to do it. This one says seven people bought it in the last 24 hours. There's an example of one that was close, but still it moved on to the next one. And you can obviously modify this prompt as well if you copy it from my description. Modify it to whatever you want. Maybe you only want listings that have five sales in the past 24 hours, or only listings that have 30 plus sales in the past 24 hours. It's totally up to you. Modify the prompt as you wish. And you can also change whatever it types in right here that's defined in the prompt. If I scroll up, I'm asking it in the first step to type t-shirt. But if you wanted to look for coffee mugs or for sweatshirts, change that, modify that here in the prompt, and then the agent will modify its behavior accordingly. You can also have multiple agents running at the same time. So if you have two or three tabs open with these agents, there's no problem. They don't interfere with each other, which is even better. Now, the second workflow I wanted to show you uses an actual research tool within its process to kind of give you the example or ideas of what can you implement into this do you have certain tools that you use on a regular basis certain websites that you go to to do your research in that case you can probably automate some of these things even if they're not directly on the marketplace for example flying research has this niche analysis tab right here where you can type in different niches and it gives you a score based on how much potential it sees in the niche. So for example, fly fishing right here gets a B. This is an average rating. Uh, the best ratings are S plus, S and A. But for example, this one right here, Bearded Dragon, got an A. So it's slightly better and it has solid potential. Now, the problem with this page is you can only type in one thing at a time and it can get quite boring and time consuming to do this on your own. So why not just instruct an agent to do this for you? It says, help me identify niches that score an A, S or S plus 
on flying research um, i give it the link right here you might have to actually log in when the agent starts up its desktop it will probably ask you to log into your account but after that what it will do is it will go through different hobbies animals occupations food and drink personal interests etc so essentially evergreen niches and then it will check them for the rating and once it's found multiple niches with a good score it will give you a summary and you can even insert niche terms to avoid right here if there's some specific words or niches that you don't want to type in or if it's already given you some results in the past and you don't want those to be tested again because you already know they have a good score so anyway that's the prompt right here again it will be in the description for you to download and this is what it looks like whilst the agent is filtering and going through different niche tests here's a couple of examples of what the results may look like here we've got mountain biking and space cat with a grade a rating you get a bit of a summary and then once again the links for amazon in this case we've got banjo piano and saxophone so it's search for different instruments and you get the scores right here banjo even scoring a grade s which is pretty rare and of course you can once again modify the prompt if you only wanted to look at specific types of niches or you only want to filter out the s and s plus ratings for example and you can also determine how many niches you want to identify before it actually stops running and the last agent workflow that i wanted to share with you before i show you how to set up your own is this right here it worked for 21 minutes and then came up with a massive list of long tail keywords that people are actually typing in on amazon and these are all links that will open up the niche straight away on amazon for you to check the competition and demand for example let's try out i called in seasick change this up here to best sellers We've got 131 results and one of these has three reviews now the bsr ranks for these are not crazy but this is just the very first link i clicked on from that extremely long list and to explain the actual agent workflow or what it does is essentially it uses two websites of combination the first one being the random word generator uh, which you may know if you've watched Adam Young's or Side Hustle Simplified channel. Here you can generate a bunch of random words that will help you for your Amazon research. The only problem is we can't go to Amazon directly with these agents because Amazon has blocked them from accessing the marketplace. But we can use this website right here. It's uh, called Keyword Tool. All of these websites will be linked down below in the description, by the way. And if you type in a random word up here plus the word shirt, and you have the Amazon tab selected, it will give you all of the long tail keywords that include the word that you typed in up here. And that's what the agent is gonna do. It's gonna use a combination of the random word generator and this tool right here, save all of these long tail keywords and put them into a list with clickable links inside of ChatGPT. You can see the master prompt right here has multiple steps and it will be linked below once again for you to copy and paste and use yourself. And if I hit enter on this, let's just quickly see it running. And there we are, it's already on the random word generator right here. And there we go, it's now going to the keyword tool to type that in with the word shirt appended now in case you want to create your own custom workflow with these agents and you're not sure how to you know structure the prompt and um, because they are quite long and in depth all you have to do really is come to a new chat in ChatGPT and start to dictate right here if i click on this it's going to transcribe essentially what i'm saying and you can just describe like you would do to any human being what you want this agent to do you can even open up a new tab and you know click through the different steps on Etsy or on your research tool um, to have an easier time explaining it. This will still be recording your voice, even if it's not the tab that's currently open. And then once you're done going through the steps and explaining them to this dictate function, then you just click on the check mark, you wait for it to process your voice, and there we are. Now all of this is recorded. You can click enter and wait for it to spit out a prompt. You do need to tell it that you're looking for a prompt for the AI agent mode right here. That is broken down in kind of a step-by-step -step process. But besides that, that's all you really have to do. And then once you have the prompt, you change it to agent mode and you start going. A few things that I've noticed so far that don't work with the agents is, for example, they can't access your hard drive. So if, like me, you were thinking, hey, I've got all of these files that I want to be vectorized or I want them to be resized to different dimensions can i take them have them uploaded to photo p perhaps and let it you know change the sizing download them as a png doesn't work unfortunately the agents can't access your hard drive on top of that not every single website out there works for example amazon like i said they don't let the agents access their marketplace anymore it used to work a couple of days ago but now it's not possible i also tried using the agents to edit some prompt guides that i have on canva.com 
but I also kept getting errors there. So if you have some confusing errors that happen whilst the agent is working, it's probably because the service or the marketplace that you're trying to access has blocked the AI agents. But most of the time when I've tried building workflows like this with different websites and tools, it's been absolutely fine and it's going to save me a ton of hours and tedious, boring work is going to be a race now, which is always amazing. I'm super excited to keep playing around with these and think of more automated workflows. Since you made it all the way to the end of this video, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that you probably like AI a lot. You might even consider yourself an AI nerd. So if you made it, comment AI nerd down below. And I would highly recommend checking out this video next, where I show you five additional AI hacks that I personally use to create best selling t-shirts.